Good afternoon, Packers fans. Aaron Negler here with your Packers Daily Chat. Coming to you live on the Cheesehead TV social channels. It is Thursday, and while the NFL world is paying attention to a quarterback on his pro day, I love that Packers Twitter and lots of Packers draft nicks are focused on the Duke pro day because of Graham Barton down there running the 40, getting people excited. And it got me thinking, man, this, this idea that the Packers could potentially pass on a prospect along the offensive line at 25 is really kind of comical. And I've, you know, obviously I understand the Packers history going back now these many, many years when it comes to finding not just good, but great players on day three of the draft, right? Whether it's David Bakhtiari, uh, a number of other guys who have stepped in and become starters. Uh, Zach Tom just being the latest example of a day three pick who has really solidified himself as a very good player, even early on in his career. That doesn't mean the Packers are going to be like, oh, nah, we set uh, when they're on the clock at 25 if there are prospects available that are deemed worthy. Um, Barton's just you know, the latest example, a guy who is going to undoubtedly have a pretty decent RAS score when all is said and done, putting him you know, in the threshold, as it were, of a possible Packers pick. There are a couple other guys that might be available there at 25 that I think would make sense. Uh, But Barton really fits the mold as far as not only has he played tackle extensively in college, but has played up and down the line, started as a center, uh, a guy much like Zach Tom, who you could probably put any at any spot along your offensive line and develop him. Um, I do think there's a decent chance that he ends up playing guard and who knows, maybe he gets selected there at 25 and gets inserted into the right guard competition right away. But there's no doubt in my mind that This idea kind of definitely on the outside of the building, at least public facing fandom, et cetera, that, oh, the Packers don't have to spend a first round pick on an offensive tackle lineman, what have you. I think that's pretty, uh, I I just think that's pretty silly. Um, There's no doubt in my mind that if there is a guy there who they love and they deem, you know, and I've seen other people talking about, oh, he's not worth a first round pick. I mean, Hey, at 25, you're essentially in the second round at that point anyway. But um, if he is by far the best value on the board, yeah, you pull the trigger. Uh, and I don't, I won't be surprised if that is the case in late April when the Packers are on the clock. Um, but we'll see. There's obviously a whole month yet to go. So I'm sure all of this will be analyzed, torn apart, completely overthought, and we'll arrive right back where we were about a month uh, ago here while we're watching the Packers uh, wait to select whoever they're going to select at 25 or even trade out because, you know, that could always end up happening. But hopefully you'll join us here on Cheesehead TV as we live stream all three days of the draft. That's right. Each and every year. Last year, I was all by myself. Thank goodness Corey Banky will be back this season. It's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you'll join us here on Cheesehead TV for our live draft extravaganza. Hope you're all doing well. Good to see everybody in the comment section. Hello to everybody. Starting with Brody. What's up, man? Random Packer. Tobin wrote, also give me Barton round one. Uh, as I was saying, man, I, I think it's a distinct possibility, especially after today, seeing how well he ran. I think there's a very good chance that if he's on the board, he is going to be in the conversation, right? Uh, there's probably going to be a handful of prospects at a couple of different positions that the Packers are going to be talking about. But yeah, he's going to be in that mix if he remains on the board. No question about it. Jeff, thanks for the super chat. How you doing, man? What was prettier, Dickey to Lofton or Rogers to Nelson? Random Packer, Willie Buchanan. <laughs> That's an old school random Packer. I like it. Um, Dickey to Lofton, Rogers to Nelson. You know, you guys know, I'm old school. Lynn Dickey was basically one of the major reasons I really became a diehard Packers fan. Love the guy. Clearly Dickie Lofton was my youth, but man, I got to tell you, there's something special about that play that they ran quite often. Rogers just talked about it on a podcast a couple of weeks ago where he would do the mini rollout, have the personal protector in front of him. Oftentimes TJ Lang sitting there to take all comers, trying to hurt his quarterback. And meanwhile, Jordy Nelson's, you know, 30, 40 yards down the field running that, corner post to perfection and Rogers just laying it out there for a bomb touchdown. I don't know, man, that's, that's hard. And then you couple that play with the work they did along the sidelines and Rogers putting it in a spot where only Jordy could get it. 
and the athleticism, the almost ballet-like precision Nelson had with his footwork. There was a play I'll never forget here in New York when they were playing the Giants where Rodgers hits Nelson up the left sideline for one of the most incredible completions I've ever seen. Coupled that one with an absolute pirouette, amazing catch he had in San Francisco along the left sideline. Two of the most just athletic, most amazing catches you'll ever see by a wide receiver. Yeah, man. Rod, I love Dickie Lofton. Never never take that away. But, whew, baby, it's tough to top Rodgers to Nelson. No question. Dustin, what's going on, man? Shout out Jordan Love. He really is impressed with his interviewing skills. Been great on the podcast recently. He's a pro's pro. Random Packer, Rob Davis. <laughs> Rob Davis is a good one. Still employed by the Green Bay Packers. Uh, in fact, I think Corey, da- Corey Banky just met him recently. Um, yeah, the uh, Jordan Love podcast blitz. Uh, I actually reached out to athletes first today and said, hey, what's it going to take to get uh, you know Jordan Love out on uh, Cheesehead TV during this podcast rollout? And uh, I was essentially laughed at. I'm kidding. No, they didn't laugh at me. But uh, yeah, it's not going to happen. But yes, it's been great. And I tell you what, it really started that kind of media blitz day he had when he was at the Super Bowl, um, appearing on a ton of different stuff. And man, that he's been phenomenal in front of a microphone. Uh, both the one I saw that came out today and then the one recently with Ryan Clark. Um, all, obviously, the Micah Parsons podcast was incredible. And it, it has been wonderful to see him. You know, I'll just say it, come kind of come out of his shell, you know, and see a, really see a side of him that we hadn't seen throughout his first year as a starter, which I, you know, I don't, I don't begrudge him that. I totally understand it. I'm trying to keep the main thing, the main thing, especially with the local press week after week. But yeah, it's, it's been great to get a lot more kind of personality from Jordan and, you know, just a, a, a peek behind the curtain of the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. It's been nice, no doubt. Doug Hype TV, what's going on, man? All we need for Super Bowl victory is for every man, woman, and child to get a pallet of Carry the G beer. <laughs> Doug hyping it up. Doug Hype living up to the name here. I mean, obviously, once it is re-released late this summer, everyone should be running out and getting themselves some Carry the G. No question about it. Dustin, what's going on, man? Think the Simmons rumors have any weight? No. I mean, that doesn't mean the Packers couldn't potentially sign him down the road, but I don't think there's anything gestating at the moment. I think they'll probably wait until after the draft. Who knows? Maybe, just maybe, they make a kind of last-minute signing prior to the draft if there's a player, i.e. Simmons, who you know feels like he, if they get behind the draft, there's going to not be as many seats available spots available etc maybe that drives down a price or two and packers are able to find a bargain but at the moment i'd be surprised if that was uh if that was churning john what's going on man happy opening day to craig council and the cubs john always always loving to stick the knife in there you know what i was gonna go to the brewers opening day today and then i got rained out because they're here in new york they're playing like right over there at uh, City Field, or they will be tomorrow now. But I still might go on Saturday. We'll see. Um, but yeah, opening day. Woo! Hard to watch Corbin Burns, although it was funny to watch Mike Trout like go yard for <laughs> like, his first at-bat against Corbin. But yeah, Corbin in an or- Orioles uniform is just not sitting right. Not sitting right. Soder, what's going on, man? Random Packer, Fred Strickland. Now that's a good pull. That is a good pull. Jeezy, baby, what's going on, man? Need to draft Aguara's replacement ASAP. Random Packer, Josiah Aguara. <laughs> that was like an Escher painting, that uh, that super chat. Um, you know, Billy and I talked about it a couple weeks ago, and I resurfaced that on Twitter earlier this afternoon. It's here on the YouTube channel if you want to go check it out on Care of the G Radio, the podcast. Yeah, the move tight end spot, definitely a sneaky draft need. And that's not something I expect they will most likely address early with a premium pick, although who knows? They used a third rounder on Josiah DeGuara, so I guess it's entirely possible. But it is something they're going to need for, you know, Matt's offense, that spot in particular. I know um, Pearson uh, did some work there this past year, you know, fullback slash move guy, um, played extensively in that Kansas City game. But I, th- 
I would think they'll probably draft someone or have some their eye on someone in the draft. Now, that doesn't mean they'll necessarily pull the trigger. If the value is there, I think there's a good chance. And I know that coming out of the owners' meetings, there was some kind of talk about A.J. Dillon potentially getting a chance to do some of that. I'll be surprised if that's an extensive audition. I think, you know, there's no doubt in my mind that you know, the competition will be open and AJ may be given a chance to dip his toe in those waters. But I'd be surprised if, again, if that's an extensive, long-lived thing, you know, but we'll see. Uh, Andrew, what's going on, man? Random Packer, Tory Gurley, wide receiver extraordinaire. He had a really nice catch in a preseason game once. That's that's all I got on Tory Gurley. William James, what's going on, man? Thanks for being a Care of the G Club member. Appreciate you. Do you think if they trade out of one this year, they could get an extra one next year? Random Packer, Terrence Murphy. Terrence Murphy, man. Was on his way to being a really good player until he got hurt. Um, could they get a number one? I mean, that's what happened back in the day, right, when they were up at, what was it, 12 or 14 or whatever it was, and then they dropped down with the Saints because I think it was 12, and they wanted to get Davenport, and then they moved back up to get Jair. But in the drop down, they got a first-round pick, right? I think at 25, it might be a bit rich, but it only takes one team, right? Who knows? It really depends. But I would suspect a, a one next year, probably not. But again, if it's the question of a team trying to jump back into the first round to get a quarterback, you know, to get that fifth year option on him, et cetera, maybe they deem it worthy of that. So it's a po- if a QB drops, et cetera, like maybe, maybe. I tend to doubt it, but depends on the circumstance. Jonathan, what's up, man? Nags, how exactly does A.J. Dillon's four-year qualifying contract work? Random Packer, Deshaun Wynn. Deshaun Wynn from one running back to another. Well, essentially, there's, you know, a couple of different machinations. And I, I kind of somewhat jokingly, but also somewhat seriously, to show everybody how Byzantine some of this stuff can get. Um, over the cap has a whole page dedicated to this type of contract that is just like, it makes your brain turn to mush within four sentences. At least it does mine, right? Because I just, if I wanted to go into, you know, that line of work, so to speak, I, I would have become much more learned on the CBA and the cap, et cetera. I am just a plain old fan who likes to drink beer and talk football. But the most basic way to break it down is the Packers cannot in any way, shape or form end up having AJ count more than 1.5 million against the cap he can make up to i believe it's 2.7 million all told for a one-year deal um and if they were to move on and say get through training camp and uh decide that they don't want him anymore they've drafted a back let's say and they they decide to move on right um the the cap hit is very very minimal and i don't even think it's a million dollars so um, essentially that's what the packers are doing there they're using a pretty obscure rule to keep him around in case and probably with every intention of like, okay, great. We can keep him in the fold for one more year, but make no mistake. If they get to the draft and there's talent there and they draft a couple guys and let's say Wilson takes a step, right? Uh, there's every possibility because of that contract that they could deem it prudent to just move on. Right. So it's a real kind of, like I said, it's very, it's rarely used. It's not something that's been utilized a whole lot um, in recent kind of free agency vintage, so to speak. But, you know, that's why uh, those guys are paid the big bucks to know about these obscure things and rules and be able to pitch it to AJ and say, because that's the other kind of part of this that I haven't really seen a whole lot written about or talked about, et cetera. You know, AJ was on the market. He did you know, reportedly have interest from teams like the Colts and the Cowboys, et cetera. But it sure feels like that, interest such as it was was possibly or pretty obviously pretty lukewarm for him to come back to the Packers on such a I'm not going to say precarious deal but a deal that they can easily get out of you know um feels like a bit like maybe he took a bit of a hometown discount but just wanted to stick around Green Bay and continue with the Packers and here I know I've talked a lot about the potential for moving on from AJ because of this which is all true but there's on the other side of this for aj is that say he has a very very strong year right where he is a lot more productive and is a 
excellent one-two punch with Jacobs and uh, really doesn't come out of the, it comes out of the gate much hotter and is able to put together a stronger year, especially kind of statistically, right? There's every possibility he ends up signing a extension with the Packers if that happens. And I think he knows this is probably his best shot at doing that, at getting on the field, being productive, and then hopefully striking it, I'm not going to say rich, but finding another extension in year five, as opposed to like you go to Dallas or you go to the Colts and you learn a new offense and who knows what happens there, right? I think he's obviously comfortable in Green Bay. And if he is productive, he does make the squad and is productive, he could find himself, you know, signing an extension. That's a much more significant one. So that's a very long answer to what should have been a very easy question. Sorry about that. Go Pack. What's up, man? Why is Madden just a roster update every year? <laughs> now, now, I mean, people love to hate on Madden. I love Madden. I'm ex- I'm obsessed with it. Look, there are lots of things about the game that drive me nuts. But, man, yeah, they do a lot. They do a lot to kind of change it up every year as far as what you can do with the game itself. Now, as far as gameplay goes, yes, I'd like to see them improve the safety AI. That always drives me nuts. The ability, the running game in particular, I would love to see get an overhaul, especially that idea of that thing that happens when you have a, a line, a couple of linemen or a lineman just blocking a guy for a second and then now running downfield to go block the safety, leaving the linebacker completely free to come and tackle your ball carrier. That have especially on the perimeter runs, that happens way too often. So yeah, there's nits to pick, but for the most part, man, if you don't want the roster update, don't do the roster update. It's pretty easy, right? You know, if you don't want to continue playing Madden, don't play Madden. I love playing Madden, so I'm going to keep playing it. I'm going to keep updating those rosters. That's just me. That's just something I'm into. Don Vito, what's going on, man? Oh, wait. And I didn't even answer the most obvious part of this question. Um, why they can do that and not innovate and keep moving forward is because they have a stranglehold on the license with the NFL and the NFL PA. It would be great if we could go back to the days of NFL 2K when there was legit competition. But that's not going to happen anytime soon. Don Vito, what's going on, man? Random Packer, Bao Zhu. Bao Zhu will always have a, a very special place in my heart. If for no other reason than the first time Rob Domofsky was on Cheesehead TV, he uh, he made a Bao Zhu reference. Good times. Ryan, thanks for being a uh, viewer and a super chatter. <laughs> Are there any off-ball linebacker trade options worth a second-round pick? Random Packer, practice squad, WWF legend Lex Luger. Not to be confused with Lex Luthor. Second round, or second round pick potential trade options? Second round feels awfully rich. Not that I've seen. Now, I've kind of looked at some of the rosters around the league where maybe there's a potential where we know if Brian's going to make that kind of move, he would probably want someone coming off or coming towards the end of their first contract. Um, I think the Raiders have a backer who is entering his final year of his deal, been really productive. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but that's the type of player that Brian might spend a draft pick on, but I would be shocked if it was a second round pick. I mean, that's a pretty significant investment. Um, yeah, a set, for a second rounder, I, I, I highly doubt it. John, what's going on, man? Random Packer, Tim Hauk. Tim, I never thought I'd live to see the day Tim Hauk was referenced here at Cheesehead TV. We're, we're, we're breaking the mold each and every day here on the Packers Daily Chat. I love it. Well, what else we got here, folks? NFL 2K was the best game by Galaxies. Madden is what happens when you have a monopoly and can make crap games. See, I don't think Madden's a crap game. I think it's a really good game. But I also agree that 2K was the best football game. NFL 2K1 was the best football game. You'll you'll never tell me that there was a game better than that. Like, that was the peak of football gaming. And then Madden got the stranglehold on the license, and it was all downhill. Uh, I boot up 2K5 every once in a while. Still a great game. See? That's what I'm talking about. No way NFL Blitz ever comes back. John, you're not lying. No, the NFL would never allow that use of the uh, the shield, the logo, so to speak. But I will tell you what. Downtown Appleton has an arcade bar, and they have the original stand-up version of NFL Blitz. And every time I'm back home, I play the shit out of that game. I love that game. 
more than life itself. It's so good. Dennis is here. What's up, Dennis? Random Packer, Frankie, Bag of Donuts, Winters. Absolutely. Next, should we resign BJ Raji? Joshua, absolutely. Cheeto, what's going on, man? Do you think the new kickoff rules force receiving teams to better use basic blocking techniques? I saw an XFL clip and it reminds me of rugby lineups. I mean, in theory, sure. But, man, you never know once things get live and what the kind of wild, mad scientist brains that our special teams coordinators will cook up as far as, I mean, who knows? I don't, I'm not quite entirely sure what we're going to have as far as wedges and the ability to link or form a wall and things of that nature. But, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be fun to watch it develop, right? There's no doubt about that. Dustin, what's up? DeGuara signs with the Jags, suckers. <laughs> now be nice. Who knows? Maybe the change of scenery will help Josiah. But, uh, yeah, thanks, Josiah, and uh, good luck in Jacksonville. <laughs> Doug, what's up? Seriously, I need more carry of the G. Down bad, LOL. Dude, you need more carry of the G. Dog, I ain't had to carry the G touch my lips since the playoffs were happening. Meanwhile, Banky's still got sitting on a hoard of it. And every time we have, like, any kind of Cheesehead TV, either chat or we're on Packer Transplants, there he is, drinking a carry of the G. Man. Talk to me about it. I hear you. I definitely hear you. All right, buddy. I got to get going. I cannot thank you enough for hanging out, talking Packers each and every day, Monday through Friday, right here on the Cheesehead TV social channels. Don't forget, Patreon members, Carry the G Club members here on YouTube. This week's happy hour is tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Lambo time. The information is on your respective pages. Please join me at the top of the hour. Corey will be there as well. It's going to be a lot of fun chatting Packers. I'm sure we'll dive into some of the discussion around the Packers and the city and the lease and all that should be a good time. Um, in the meantime, please hit like, hit subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, Cheesehead TV. We are devoted to Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day. Go Pack Go. Uh-huh.